Hey guys. Hey, this is Mind Pump. You've been listening for like three years. And we've only been on air for two. You should probably <laughs> keep supporting us. We need you to go to the website at mindpumpmedia.com. But not Media. just com. telling people. We need money. Go to mindpumpmedia.com. It's a financial com. thing. Mindpumpmedia.com. Go there, enroll in the I Math Super Bundle wallet. or the RGB Bundle, and you're going to get the No BS Six Pack Formula, the Fasting Guide, and the Nutrition Guide absolutely free. Keep hypnotizing, guys. Help yeah, yeah, Justin. Like, so I know you have a PayPal account. They have kids. <laughs> help them. Mindpumpmedia.com. They it. need to eat. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. A while ago, there was a dude that worked out in one of the gyms that I managed Big motherfucker. Oh, like, okay. I see where you're going. Yeah, I was, and I was young. I was like, let's see, I must have been 20s. So it was like one of the first gyms that I managed. Mm -hmm. So, and I've always, look, I've got a, uh, you know, I've got gay people in my family. We're a very love fa loving family. I was never, I, I've always been very open minded, not a big deal. But I did, without realizing, subscribe to the stereotype that, you know, uh, you know, they're not as masculine, right? Mm. This big ass dude, uh, and I'm big muscular motherfucker, comes in to work out of my gym all the time. Dude's fucking jacked strong as shit and he's a kickboxer and so we would talk a lot afterwards and he'd show me these moves or whatever and one day i went to uh, the gym where he trains and the dude was hitting the heavy bag and was just fucking crushing it and another dude walks in another big dude and they're like hey what's going on what's up bro and they kiss each and other like, on the lips and i'm like whoa like, whoa <laughs> and so afterwards i'm like dude you're, that I'm didn't like, even I, make sense i'm like whoa. is that i'm like is that your boyfriend and he's like yeah yeah he's like you didn't know i was gay i'm like well no i don't know at all and he goes yeah. why because i'm like a tough dude, and I'm like, <laughs> and I felt yeah. stupid. You he know said, what I mean? he no, said, I know. it's like yeah. such a stereotype. But I felt so stupid because I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's why I thought I didn't think you were. And I was like, I remember realizing, like, geez, I totally fell into that stereotype, you know, which is obviously not true. Yeah, because he could easily, easily kick my ass. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, that happened to me once actually too. <laughs> you got your ass kicked? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, like <laughs> one of the guys was like super masculine like that, and mm. I was like. We're, I was training him and then I had no idea. And, and he did all kinds of like, you know, sports and stuff. We like totally got off. Everything was great. You know, and it was just like, I had no idea. He came in and his boyfriend came in and they're, you know, hanging out and grabbing ass and stuff. It was interesting. Yeah. I, I only feel, I only feel awkward and weird when I assume that he's a heterosexual and he's not that's when i feel awkward like if you're just i just you're talking to someone and to you to me i don't see any of those like you said stereotypical signs right. that mm -hmm. would tell me he's gay or not and then i assume he has a girlfriend or a wife and i ask about his girlfriend like oh so do your girlfriend go here all the time and then it's like well what's funny is i they feel you, more they give, comfortable they give you subtle hints like one. no my yeah. partner and i actually do this and then i yeah. do it again and then by about the third time i go what an asshole i am <laughs> fuck he was uh, hit, he was giving me little fucking freebies to let me know like he said partner partner and I'm yeah. just like yeah so she this is she that? and then yeah like, yeah oh. we just totally assume I know I just I, that's why I love it when like somebody's like super like out there and like extravagant you know yeah. it's awesome it's hilarious. <laughs> You're like thanks for the yeah sign. it's like you know thanks you know like I I don't have to guess it's just one of those stereotype things you know what I mean well yeah. you like know, the it, only way that we're you would 35 know. years old we grew up in a different era right now I mean it's it's been a trend I think uh, you're true. 20 younger it's a total it's totally different. Oh my now. god! Eighteen years ago, it was very, it was very different. You know, the, the stereotypes were encouraged. I mean, not encouraged, but they were reinforced by conversation and stuff like that. Now, you know, you know, obviously, I know better, but it's pretty. It was, uh, it was pretty funny to see the dude walk in and kiss him, and I was like, "What just <laughs> happened?" <laughs> see, I don't I, know. I like always your head just explodes. I always find it fascinating as a society how we like when we were behind, like with the, our way of thinking, right? Uh, very caveman with that that mm. mentality. But I also find it crazy how we we always tend to go extreme one or the other. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, and then like, and I, I just put everybody in a box. Yeah, yeah I, and I feel do. I feel like you know we, they go out of their way, and you know what this kind of reminds me of. So Sal last night sends me a text Whoa, message. Here we go. He sends <laughs> oh, me. Oh wait, which one? Yeah, no, no, not, not that one. <laughs> yeah, it's not the, the one that. before that actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, before you, your mind turned me on so much. Whoa. He sends me a text message, and it, Katrina and I were literally uh, just getting ready to Netflix and chill, but literally watch Netflix and documentaries. Oh, right? it wasn't sex. Yeah, it wasn't uh, that. So we were. That's we, code word. We were in the documentary section. So right now, uh, something that our New Year's resolution. Um, I don't know if I shared this on air or not, but I'll, I'll share it. Watch more TV. 
Yeah. So no, we we have we have decided that uh, our goal is to go at least three to four times out of the week. But we said, you know, never will we let seven days go by where we don't make this time for ourselves. Uh, and that sounds weird because we sleep together every single night and we we see each other all the time and communicate. But so much of what we communicate and do is related to business and related to other stuff and very surface. And, and sometimes we can just get tired and just crash and then realize that, hey, we're not always uh, working on our relationship. And I think that's an important thing, especially when you're in one that you've been in for a long time. We Six years we've been together and you, it's important to set the or create these habits. And so one of these habits that we're trying to create for ourselves is that uh, we do something that is educational for ourselves, but we also understand it's late at night on a weekday or like that. So part of that, we're okay with it being entertainment. So sometimes we listen to an audio book that we both want to uh, listen to and learn about, or uh, one of us will read and share. Sometimes it's just us sharing and talking about stuff. And then sometimes it's watching a documentary where we actually get something from it, right? That's good information. So we were literally doing that uh, when you sent over that text message. So it was perfect. To then, watch uh, the, the, the was it was it called minimalism? The, yeah, the minimalism or minimalism or the the minimalist I, something I don't, like that. It's you know it's funny. So you're talking about your so this is one of the things I love the most uh, about Jessica. It's like something I absolutely love is when I hang out with people. Sometimes I I have a pretty keen sense of how people receive me, and sometimes I can tell that I'm being annoying or how boring. Do I receive you yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, sometimes I can tell that like, if I'm hanging around with people, I'm like, hey, let's watch TV. And I'll be like, cool, I can find something good. And it's like, I'm going to watch a documentary. And people, are, everyone's like, oh, here we go, Sal. But anyway, I'm hanging out with my girl. And uh, I'm like, hey, do you want to watch uh, Westworld? Which, by the way, we've been kind of watching a little bit. I knew and you'd love it. And she's like, mm, she's like, I'm not really in the mood. And she goes, hey, you want to learn something? And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> God damn it! I got yes, the right girl. She's made for you. So that's yeah. why we, we we went and looked at the documentaries, and we put on. Uh, God, we got to find the right name of it because I don't want to. I don't want to. I want to. Oh, sure you text the right one because we we searched right away when she searched it. It popped right up. I yeah, mean, I think you would, either one of those will pop up. But what I what I can't even remember what sent me down this road to why I wanted to share uh, with it. But I thought it was a great, um, a great. It had a great message. There was a great message behind uh, the documentary, and so a quick synopsis. I don't want to be spoil, you know, spoil it or anything. I think everybody should watch it. I think there's there is something to take away from it. Is uh, this the idea of uh, living living with uh, just the bare minimums, what you need, mm. versus this uh, excessive amount of stuff that we have? And they and they had some great studies in there. They showed like just the increase in in sales over the last like you know, 20 years, like 1970 and before, like there's this pretty, pretty natural growth of, you know, consumers buying things. Now, of course, there's things like, you know, uh, what's the company that sends everything over uh, that's changing the game? I can't even believe I can't. I don't know. Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Amazon is like obviously been a game changer for the ability for us to buy things and have it the next day. And so mm. there's other, there's always, there's definitely factors, but I mean, it's like astronomically different. It's yeah, like what they were showing because they're showing this growth curve of, of the amount of stuff that we buy. And then it kind of exploded mm -hmm. after the seventies. And now we live in how way more space houses are much bigger but we, they were pointing interesting things out, like they did this heat map of where families spend time in their house, and most people spend about 99% of their time in about 40% of the house. Mm -hmm. Like people have a living room and nobody goes in the living room. They have yeah. a dining room, nobody eats at that new day. You know, they have like several areas to sit down and eat, but they only eat at the kitchen the table. Uh, there's there's a there's a patio that nobody spends time in. There's you know areas of the house that we don't spend time in, and we've got this big space, but yet. We're not utilizing. We just have more space, or we just have more stuff. Like, I, you know, when I was watching, I was thinking about my kids, right? I mean, Justin, I know you can you can relate to this. Like Christmas time, mm. literally, I'll drive my home, my kids home from Christmas with so much shit in the back of my car. Yeah, there's no fucking way they'll get they'll get through it all. You're it already it. strategizing it. Where can I hide this and then eliminate it? Exactly. Like <laughs> they're not even going to play with it all. No. And then I look at myself and I look at my wardrobe and yeah. I open my closet and I'm like, "Hmm. I wear the same 10 pieces of of, of clothing yeah. all the time and very very rarely or never I would argue like five. Do I wear this other <laughs> shit? 
But that's that's my point. That that was kind of the point of this. And it, what was interesting about it because they definitely had speakers on there that I think got the message wrong. Oh, definitely. And it comes off as a religion. A I was bit. very interested uh. to see where it was going to go and why you sent me in this direction because I was like, mm. get the fuck out of here. I'm going to light this thing up at the end of this because I I mm. was like, yeah. I liked the message. But the problem I have with it is this. Here, let me back up a little bit. So what they did really good and I, is what we're talking about is that I think a lot of us in general, now this is an overgeneralization, but for the most part, a lot of us live in excess. We don't need a lot of the things. I'll be the first one. to. I mean, I'm the guy with fucking like 400 pairs of shoes, of course, right? Mm-hmm. I have a shoe for every day. So, you know, is that excessive? Sure. But there is a point that they talked about too, where there's certain, there's learn, there's balance to that, right? Like certain things have meaning to you and have that are important to you and they make you feel good. Well, that it, was the message. The message that I got from it, because there were people that were speaking on there, again, where I'm like, okay, they totally don't get it. Like these people are, some of these people use it as religion and I don't need, I only got what I need type of deal. But the reality is, is that do do the things that you own serve you? So, for example, Adam, with your shoe collection, you fucking love your shoe collection. You have so much fun with it. It's something you enjoy doing. That's okay. But think of all the things that we own, all the shit that we own that doesn't yeah. serve us that we could give we could give two fucks about, yeah. right? That's the difference, and that's I think the oh, message. I'm big on purging. Like, yeah, I, I love. That's like one of the biggest <laughs> loss, therapy yeah. things for me. Yeah, nothing to do with that. But like, as far as like clutter and mm. shit in my house, like, oh my god, it's it's such therapy for me to go through and take shit to the dump and just be like, I'll see you later and never again. And then you know, that's that's you just kind of see this accumulation of stuff that just like sits there, and it, it annoys me because it's. You know that nobody's using this stuff. Why do I even have this here? And I was I was thinking of as you guys were talking about this. I haven't seen this documentary yet, by the way, but uh, it reminds me of the last thing that we watched on Teg Talks with the guy talking about uh, addiction and how mm-hmm. he actually was describing how people have like uh, you know all this space in their house and they've and, you know we've built all these walls and like we're we're connecting with stuff more than we're connecting with people and so this is like one thing one of the problems that you know even with drugs it's like a connection that i'm making with this that i'm not getting from a physical he, they got into this right they here. did and this was this part was interesting to me the meditative well. and all that stuff yeah, and, yeah and just the way and what uh how much uh and because i feel like it's kind of similar to the message that we give with being the counter to the industry right the fitness industry is promoting one one message we really are trying to represent the pushback on that in this in a sense right i feel like the same thing goes with kind of their message with the minimalism is man right now like the every advertising and companies are pushing this image when in reality it's really not like that and it's unfortunate because where they showed these markers of like the increase of purchases and people buying more and more things it's like they were it's going up the amount of stuff that you that you don't need when uh the the amount of money that people the average income and stuff mm-hmm. like that is not increasing at that rate so we're just and, and they're showing like you know uh, especially with like they talked about people that are depressed and sad like say more sales more sales and you're trying to fulfill this part of your yeah. life and i why i you liked know, retail it retail therapy is right? i re- okay i remember this this was this happened for me so i i totally connected with these two guys both guys had a very similar childhood as mine so they have these they have these horrific stories right of their parents and stuff and you know whatever we could talk all day whose was worse or whatever but we all had a rough childhood at, that's, and, that's funny. I thought the exact same thing when I watched it. Oh, right away. Because I saw it right away and I was like, ooh, Adam's going to connect with oh, that. Oh, totally, totally, right? So I totally get uh, what was their drivers. And I also get, I had that moment in my life. And, I, and I've and i kind of briefly shared this on the podcast before where um, I, you know, at a, <clears throat> I pushed really hard at a young age to be successful. And I, I used to tell people, I really believed in my head I was going to be retired by 30. Really, truly believe that. And I was on a mission to do that. And really what that was was because I didn't have much growing up. And so it, it motivated me to push at this level. So I connected with those guys and I got that. And then I remember uh, a point in my life and where I had a lot I, financially and, and with tangible things and, and monetary right stuff. Like So once I, I got that and I realized that my, my life at that time was no better as far as my happiness and how I felt about uh, my relationships and everything else going on besides my financial success, I actually really, it took a lot for me to step out and go like, 
wow, I'm nowhere near the happiest I've ever been in my life, yet I have the most stuff I've ever had in my life. And at that moment, my whole thinking of how I bought things and the stuff that I would go after completely changed. And, you know, someone that, that's an outsider looking in, like, oh, how can you say that? Because you have all these shoes and you're into watches. Well, yeah, these, there are certain things that I have invested in that I, that I bought because just like Sal said, I've learned to connect what things do make me happy. I do enjoy having versus the things that were like, that were, that were poorly motivated. For example, I was notorious all through my twenties. I was that guy who, when I bring all my friends and, the, and we, there'd be 10 of us all out and I picked up every bar tab, mm-hmm. you know, cause I could. You know, because I could do things like that or I was doing things in excess as far as like spending money on things that were just ridiculous that would never not only hold value, but would also be burnt and gone and Vegas trips and crazy stuff like that. Once I realized that these were not fulfilling my life, it changed my whole philosophy. It changed my drive, the way I looked at money, things like that. So I connected with all that. What I didn't like about it was the extreme side of it where it became almost religious. And then, and I don't like, cause the first thing I had to ask myself was, okay, look at these guys. Right. Mm. And they, they were, they referenced like they moved up in the corporate ladder. So I'm guesstimating that they were making a hundred to 150 grand a year, which to me, I've always used to tell Katrina that the difference between 70 and 150 K to me is very, very little. Yeah. It's not life changing, making no money and making well, 70. Especially. K- yeah. Where you, where we live. Yeah. It's all real. It's well, all well, real. Sci- it's all real. Scientists have actually established that yeah. they've shown that money does buy happiness up to a certain point. Yes. Once you get, once you have shelter, once you have clothing, once you you have food, you have access to certain things, anything over that, you don't get any happier. This is why lottery winners are depressed. There's studies done on this on people who win the lottery, and it shows their happiness level spikes for about a year, and then it goes right back down to where it was before, and they're no happier well, than they were they before. Because they lost their purpose, you know. Like I, I, I don't know. I, I tend to think that like those those types of people that get fortunate enough to get that kind of a, a an influx of cash, like if you can't figure out how to to you know put that to use and to work and, and to help people or to do something with it then that's the problem. Mm. You know, if you're if you're looking at it as like I just absorbed all of this and this is all about me, you know, like I, I could see that being depressing. Well see, something I kept uh, I wrote down and kept just referencing several times as I was watching the documentary. Because one thing that I I didn't like is how they demonized uh producers. They demonized yes. industries. You know, mm-hmm. like in one in one scenario they were talking about how the fashion industry you know, in the 50s and 60s had like three seasons. And now I think there's 56 seasons because their goal is to keep making new clothes and make styles go out faster and, and new styles come in faster so people have to keep buying more and more clothes. Yeah, And it's true, people own ridiculous amounts of clothes, especially compared to people 50 years ago. And they're blaming the producers of that, but really it's- Yeah, con- that, that's our own fault. Yeah, that's consumer yeah. Yeah. driven. But here's the thing, like I kept writing this down, that, that, man, that mankind's- greatest strength it can also be its greatest weakness no, that's like, one of my fa- one i of, always say one those. of our greatest strengths is our desire to uh want to you know create more and do better and solve problems mm-hmm. but it also becomes one of our greatest weakness because then we apply it in areas that don't necessarily serve us yeah, for example like we could back off that throttle for sure yeah for example like we apply so much of our productive ability um, uh, to close. Um, and there's some good side effects of that. Look, people, lots of people make a good living doing it. It's definitely made clothes so inexpensive that now we don't necessarily see people going without clothes anymore. We have so many clothes that we throw them away now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, there, there are some good side effects of it, but there's also the bad side effect of imagine if we took all that productive capability and applied it towards other things. Imagine if we solved the problem with clothes, but then moved away from that and said, okay, now let's solve this other problem. Let's all use our collective ability. The problem is we'll never move away from it. That's the thing is that- In in any aspect. I mean, you you put any of those things up on the board and you say like, homes, we've figured out how to build an efficient home, like super, you know, efficient with energy and, you know, everything like maxes at its its max capacity. Like, uh, you know, everything is so efficient. But even then, there's going to be a, a, another way that we can improve on that. That's just how we think. We we yeah. we we just look at one area and one topic, and it's just it's, it's will never end. It's well, insatiable. I, I, didn't, I didn't like too, like Sal was saying, the demonizing part too is like. You know, I, I watch it and then you, uh, it makes me feel bad because, you know, we're, we're getting ready to, we're like getting ready to house shop right now and we're looking for a house with more square footage, right? 
and I already have like 2,600 <laughs> square feet and I want like 3,500 square feet. So I'm watching this and I'm like, I'm not going to feel guilty for wanting more more space just because I necessarily don't need only that. Like I'm looking at if even if you did my heat, I I want that. I want to be able to have a room where maybe I can just go. It never gets see, hardly any traffic, and I want to go in there and I want to meditate. Well, see, that's what it did for me. What it did for me mm. was in my where I were my new place. Um, I have a kitchen and I have a dining room, like a lot of houses do, right? But when we were setting it up, you know. Uh, Jessica, she's like, you know, she goes, what do we need a kitchen and a dining room for? We're just going to eat at one table. I'm like, well, every house has. And, she's, and she made me realize how fucking ridiculous it was. And she said, look, this is our place. We live here. Make it and, how you want, right? And yeah, and watching that made me realize like, yeah, if you have a big house, it's great if you use the space for what you want. It's your place. Like, yeah. I love steam room, right? I could build it. I'm not going to feel guilty for having steam room because I'm going to use that shit right? to its fullest capacity. Yeah. Now, I will feel guilty if I have this extravagant, you know, room with fancy couches and shit that nobody ever will goes in or it's uses. The plastic that never comes off. Yeah, yeah. then I'm kind of like, okay, well, that was a waste. That that doesn't. It's not uh, serving me. I don't have any value. I see. I like that. I think that's a yeah. great way to take that because that's exactly how I felt too. Was just like, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to get to that point. I'm watching this guy living in this house. I think the house was like 400 square feet or whatever and it had sliding walls. So if you had, they had thought of everything. Like if you had company over, a, the wall actually slid and then a curtain went across and then there was a bed that folded down from the wall on that on Oh, that they side. had like a little tiny, like it was like a, a Murphy bed. Oh, to comes to out. totally. Yeah, 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 I mean, it was, I mean they've, they've made these houses. So what I, see, I always see, I can't help, my mind works backwards as far as like, okay, I right away see the motive of for the business and the marketing and all that side. So when I heard the message right away, I'm like, okay, what are we selling? What are we, what are we, yeah, yeah, where, yeah, yeah. where are we trying to, cause they, 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 <laughs> what are we trying to do? And sure as shit, here come out all these houses. And I remember when I saw these last year, like molecule um, homes. Yes. I don't know what they call them. Like they might call them that. And they're, I think well, they they're like, they build them out of like a trailer or yeah. something small. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then they put all these like testimonials of these people. And of course there's, there's always, I mean, if you've, do something crazy like this or you create a cult of people that want to go to this extreme you're going to find a couple of these with great stories which they did they found a guy that was on wall street making ridiculous six-figure money and decided that he was just going to do get rid of everything and live this minimalist life where he lived his life out of a bag now which to me that's just it's ridiculous like, cool yeah i'm <laughs> yeah. all for it yeah. if it was for you and you yeah, needed that, that that's, because see, he he yeah. woke up one day and he probably looked, went to that extreme of the spectrum and then was just like oh my god this is way too much and then like went swung all the way the other way which what, is fine if that's what you here's the, th the yeah. interesting thing here's the thing about, i challenge that though if you think that's truly healthy though yeah well, well what i'm saying what i was what, where i was gonna go wrong. with that is here's the thing number one minimalist uh lifestyle exists because we live in a society where we have already created yeah we get the luxury to do that. thank you yeah. like you don't you don't see people in third world countries going. I'm going to live a minimal like they're they're not concerned oh, really? with that. What an excellent point! Yeah, in they're fact, sleeping all together in one bed. Yeah, in fact, it's only pomp. It's almost pompous of us bro, a little bit. It and is, let me dude. tell you something. In fact, yeah, it's ridiculous. That documentary, which is kind of anti stuff, right? Could you get that vibe a little bit? Although the although the hosts of it do a good job of saying, look, it's not about consumption. Consumption's not a problem. It's about co compulsory. Uh, uh, consumption. It's that. Uh, it's that pr having a problem where you're consuming things that you don't really want. You buy things you don't need and you don't want that don't bring you value. That I understood. But as you're watching it, you get this kind of vibe of anti, you know, uh, wealth, anti, you know, buying things, anti having stuff. And I was watching that and I'm thinking to myself, holy shit, this is the best commercial ever for capitalism because you're, you if you're in a country that's poor and you're watching that you know what you're saying to yourself look at these motherfuckers they're so rich <laughs> they're downgrading they're so rich that they're they're complaining they have so much stuff like, ah, that they want to just go backward like let's they, get rid of it yeah there's they have so much stuff that it's making them sad yeah. like that's what i'm you know that's what i see from it right. but really here's the thing here's the wonderful thing about progressing with mankind especially when it comes to because look, markets are not perfect because humans are not perfect. But what markets do very well is they take a bunch of people who are just interested in, in, in serving themselves, which is human nature, okay, because that's how humans are, 
and it gets us to work together without actually consciously trying to work together. Like if I'm buying something from you, we're making a, a conscious effort to work together. And all the people that work to make your product con- didn't consciously work together, but they did. They organized each other, each other to work together. If you're making a, a, a tennis shoe where there were, there's several steps that go into making the rubber of the shoe. There's several steps that go into making the laces and putting these things in. All these people work together to do that, but they did it on accident because they were all serving their own self-interest. And that's kind of the beauty of how markets work. But here's what's interesting. Here's the best part about the minimalist uh, uh, message in regards to that is if people truly, truly just went out and just did what, what they thought brought them value, true value versus the whole I'm going to get this because I'm supposed to, or I'm going to yeah. buy this because I, I think I need to, or because it's going to fill this empty hole in me. If you really went out and did and bought and consumed the things that you really understood and really thought and felt that really served you, we would make markets so much fucking better. The world would be better as a result, and a lot of the negatives that we see from markets like or like this ridiculous consu- you know, production and consumption of things that sometimes you look at and you go, well, that's fucking stupid. Why are we spending so much time you know, making these things and doing these things? It would refine itself into something so mm-hmm. much better if people truly went out and really knew and really said to themselves, is this bringing me value? Do I really need these things here that I'm not going to actually use well, when I could to, take that? Yeah, you're going to have to deprogram like yeah. every single person in America that have been programmed since they're a little kid to... You know, to buy whatever this or that that they're marketing so hard at you. Like well, it, dude. Well, I did think, think, that, think just about to it, evaluate think, what is this going to bring me benefit. Think about yeah. all the shit that we consume because and and buy and, and use because of the artificial sense of status. Like, uh, yeah. Like I need to have the status. Like I'm going to buy all this bullshit to put on my clothes or whatever, so that other people, you know think I'm better or whatever and it's not but it's not serving me you know what I'm saying I don't really want it it's just because I think it's giving you know that's just an example of what I'm mm. talking about like if we went out and actually bought the things that we thought really served us and did the things that really truly served us then the market would produce more of those things and it would be truly reflective of what we really want what really does us you know what does us good and you you can't help but apply this to our industry, yeah. to the fitness industry. Look at, imagine if people went out uh, with fitness and said, okay, what's truly serving me? What's, what am I truly gaining value? Well, that's the magic of? behind maps, bro. Yeah. That's the magic behind maps is the simplicity of it, is doing the, the, the least amount that you need to do to get the most amount. of, And it's like the same process of do, is getting rid of the shit that is not providing you much in right. your life and focusing on the thing that does provide you a lot. I love the YouTube project that went viral uh, from this mindset, which was the the Project 333, right? Mm. Project uh, 333, which is the idea of three months of living off of 33 items. And that includes all your accessories, hats, underwear, socks, hmm. shoes, all stuff like that, and see, showing people that could do that. Could you do this for three months? And I really like that. I like that as an exercise, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so when I see something like this right away, of course, my mind goes, okay, here's the business pitch out of this. These guys are going to make millions of dollars, which to me, I go like, let's find it. I, you know, okay, here, here's one I bet you didn't do, which I did because I was going this way. So right away, I evaluate, okay, these guys probably made a hundred something grand, whatever, realize they chased this and that that's not where true happiness is. Now they they're have. making millions off their documentary. So, so now they're the going to make millions off this documentary stuff. So I decided to start Google searching these guys and look deeper into their personal lives and ah, where, where they're at currently because right. this documentary was done about a year ago. I can't find anything because these kids are very, they're very smart the way they did their, uh, they even created their own Wikipedia which they're the only ones that have created. So if you go to their Wikipedia, you can see it's, and it's all linking back to their website. They own like all the pages of anything related to their yeah. name, minimalist, minimalism. So they bought some some firm, an online firm to go ahead and sort of wipe and, and clean slate all of their data and their information so on the internet. So that, and why I was digging into that because I was really- <laughs> You want to see if they're hypocrites. Yes, I want, to see, I want to see if these guys now have got millions of dollars yeah, and they're yeah, living yeah. in their 400 square foot house or yeah. they're, you know, and I doubt, I mean, you would be a real, idiot to go out and spend money on something that ridiculous right away after making your first million but you know even to see where they're how they're living their lifestyle but now see their comparison. argument their whole argument it would be hard to prove that because then they could say what this brings me value see their message that they themselves were, were pointing out wasn't necessarily that you live a only necessary life where all i have is you know one toothbrush one cup one it's just 
I'm only going to consume the things that truly serve me. And think about that. When you, when you go buy something, when you go do something, ask yourself that. Like, is this really serving me? For example, I'll give you a great example. Um, scientists have established now in several studies that when people spend money on things, they get way less in terms of happiness and self-fulfillment than if they spend thing, money on experiences. Oh, yeah. Experiences give people way more. So if I took you know, $2,000 and bought you know, the coolest electronics you know, speaker system or whatever in my house versus taking two grand and going on an awesome hiking trip out in the mountains with a guide and you know, learn how to meditate or whatever, I'm going to get much more value out of that experience than it will out of the two thousand dollars on stuff, and the reason, and, and the easy way to figure that out for yourself is to to do that process before you go buy something. Yeah. Is this really serving me? And here's another example. We we talked about this the other day in an episode. I don't even think it has aired yet, but we talked about gyms and the cost of a gym membership. Like people people freak out if a gym membership is over like thirty bucks. People are like, oh my god, it's so much money. Like if you use it and it's really serving you and you're getting fit and healthy. God, that's worth way more than than thirty bucks. Think about how much money you waste on bullshit. Yeah. you know, every single week, right? But of course, it's your own. It's no, your own value. That's an excellent point. I think well, it's an excellent point. Yeah, and it, I wanted to get back to like as far as maps is concerned, and like um, just just cutting through a lot of the the fluff. So, you know, like when you're looking at like programs, what what's hype? What what what's hyped the most? It's it's look at this person, look how sexy they are, look at, like, everything is about some person that's, like, mm. promoting this thing. Mm -hmm. And, like, who gives a fuck about that person? What is <laughs> right. it going to do for me? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, like, you know, that's a struggle that we've mentioned a long time ago when we were first kind of starting out with the podcast is that's a, that's an uphill battle for us because, you know, do we do all these hero shots? Do we, you know make this all about like what we look like and what we're uh, doing awesome shit that, you know, other people are getting quote unquote inspired by, or do we just give them what works and what, you know, what the meat and potatoes is for them to see immediate progress and result. And, and, you know, like, this is how I feel with when, when I, when I buy books and when I, and like people ask me if I read and yes, I do read. I, I definitely prefer the books that, that cut out all the bullshit and all this stuff about, Mm -hmm. here's my bio and here's what I've accomplished so far. And it, I don't give a shit. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? Yeah. And, you know, and, and this, this is, uh, it can be applied to like, we talk about supplements all the time, right? The average fitness consumer of supplements got to spend over a hundred dollars a month on stuff that is giving them what, like, yeah. what are they getting from that? Think about that for a second. Now, let's say I spend a hundred dollars a month on supplements and we know the vast majority of supplements do shit they do jack shit for you so but let's just pretend that they give me i don't know two extra pounds of muscle a year from spending twelve hundred dollars a year or investing twelve so I'm, i've invested a thousand two hundred dollars a year to gain those two pounds of muscle or i could take a thousand two hundred dollars and what else could i put that in that may serve me better may serve me more rather than falling for that whole compulsory consumption model of buy more supplement buy this buy this new this new drink this oh new you could go to you could go to someone's seminar like you can go to one of yes these, i mean kidding me for twelve hundred dollars you can go listen you to could hire a good fucking tr like a really good trainer for 10 workouts yeah do those over the course of 10 weeks and you'll get way more benefit mm -hmm. it'll serve you way more you'll do more than build two pounds of muscle and you'll have an incredible experience versus I get this, you know, fruity, you know, chemical laden drink, you know, sent to me, mm -hmm. you know, every single month. You know what well, I'm saying? You know, that's isn't that crazy too? Like that's the that's why supplements fall in this sweet spot of like pricing too, right? It's just kind of it's gotta be just low enough that people go like, ah, oh, it's worth the try. Yeah, it's kind of like buying groceries. Yeah, right? It's like yeah. kind of, it's 20 to $50 a shot each time I do one of these bottles. And it's like, yeah, it's worth the try. And I want, if I, and, and of course they tie it to some guy, like you said, that looks amazing and he's badass and, you know, says he takes this stuff every single day. And that's how he got there when there's a hundred other things, disciplines that he's taught himself to get his physique to look like mm -hmm. that it has nothing to do with that supplement, you know? So here's, I, here's an interesting study I'd like to do. I would like to take a group of people and divide it in half of inter be beginner to intermediate people. So just, just regular Joes, right? And half of them I'd like to invest 
$500 a month in the cutting, most cutting edge supplements that we just give them. And then they go do their own workout, whatever. Mm -hmm. The other half, I'd like to take $500 a month and invest it in professional coaching from the best coaches and personal trainers who can work with them online or, or virtually just kind of show them what to do or and education coach them the one, seminars or education seminars yeah. or great exercise programming, split them up, take the same investment, give them six months and then see the difference in results. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There, there's no doubt. Actually, there's no doubt in anybody's mind. Ladies and gentlemen, if you, your favorite uh, fitness celebrity that's selling you all this bullshit supplements, you pose this question to them, you will paint them in a corner. They will not be able to answer because they know the answer. They know what the answer is. And the answer is that the $500 a month investment in professional coaching or good exercise programming or education yeah. will kick, won't just, it won't even be close. It will kick the shit yeah. out of the. Plus, it's long lasting. That's what I'm yeah. saying. It'll blow it the fuck away. And so when it comes to, I know we're a fitness podcast, and that's why I keep trying to bring it back there. To, know, yeah. to apply it there, but if you ask yourself that question, uh, is this serving me? How is this serving me? Is this something that I truly value? You will take whatever money you're, you, you have to invest in your fitness, wellness, health, and longevity, yeah. and it will be spent much, much more wisely. Well, I think there's a lot to learn with this mentality, and that's why it probably struck a chord is because like same thing with exercises like there's there's a specific number of exercises we know uh, creates the most benefit right and and to be a minimalist i would i would focus just on mastering like these five wow. lifts wow you know what what a great point like that's are we I are meant. we not minimalist that's when it comes to exercise that's what i meant yeah. about this is what maps represents it represent it represents like if you were going to do a bare minimum amount of stuff these are the moves we're not saying that people can't build off of this or you can't modify that's we encourage that with people's program in fact we include modifications yes in yeah. but the the idea and the point that we're trying to get across is listen if you do these basic movements three times a week watch yeah. watch what the fuck happens absolutely yeah, yeah. And most of it is psychologically like we just it's tough it's tough to kind of keep going through the the process of like well i have these things and it's so simple it's just it you know, I feel like there just needs to be more, and and, mm -hmm. and I, I need to like clutter my my program with all this other like fancy moves. And I see this Instagram person doing this and that, and it's a lot like having a shit ton of clothes, you know, that you never wear. It's mm -hmm. just like, what's the point? You know, you want to just keep putting all these clothes on top of each other, yeah. <laughs> or are you gonna stick with what you know you look awesome? Well, what in? serves you? you yeah, know what I'm saying what serves you best. That's there should be nothing. There should be there shouldn't be a single exercise movement or whatever in your workout that does not somehow serve your fitness or wellness or whatever your goal or target is. Now, if your goal or target is simply to, I just want to work out. I don't give a shit if it does anything for me. I just like to exercise. Well, pff, you don't need a program. Just go into a gym and just start doing random shit. Yeah. But if that's not you, and I know that's most, most of you are not that person, there shouldn't be a single thing in your program that doesn't serve you. If you were to list your priorities of things or the things that you know are going to serve you most in terms of fitness and health, it would be two categories of things. Uh, actually, it would be a few categories, but the top two would be fit, would be your, how you work out and how you eat. And if you broke down how you ate, it would be whole natural foods. It would be foods that nourished your body. It wouldn't be you know, this bar or this powder or this, you know, whatever chemical, whatever, or I need to have this sweet tasting something. So I'm doing this artificially flavored, you know, whatever. I mean, again, if it truly serves you, that's fine. But I think if you ask yourself that question, most of you will say it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really do me any good. And if you approach your fitness and health with this minimalist, and I hate to, I hate to label it minimal, min, right. minimalist attitude, but if you, if you approach it with this attitude of, is this going to serve me? You'll find that the decisions you make and the things that you do for your for your health and wellness uh, will be the things that will make the biggest changes in how you feel, both mentally, uh, physically, even spiritually. Uh, everything from sleep, meditation, uh, the kind of food that affects your your gut microbiome, like all these things that are very very important that serve you. You'll find that that's where your money, time, and energy are going to go, and you're going to stop spending time and money and energy and things that simply don't serve you. So with that, if you like Mind Pump, leave us a five-star rating review on iTunes. If we like your review and we pick it, you're going to get a free Mind Pump t-shirt. Also, check us out on Instagram at Mind Pump Radio. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam's at Mind Pump Adam, Justin's at Mind Pump Justin, and Mr. Doug Eggy is at Mind Pump Doug. Commercial. Good episode right there. All right. I think so. I think that was a good episode. I think we should, we should talk about... Uh, 
Let's talk about uh, the super maps bundle. Map super bundle. Super bundle. Maybe we... Or should we talk about just maps anabolic since it's basic? Well, this, this is kind of what I was thinking. Maybe we do a special... Uh, we just did the 50% off, so I don't want to do like a sale or anything like that. Maybe we... Or maybe we just push maps anabolic by itself. We don't even say a That's sale. That's what I was going to say because it's... Okay, it, let's, it do let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. We going, Doug? Yeah, we're rolling. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to hear us. We actually watched a documentary. It spurred a conversation. Believe it or not, we had a, a, a topic we want to talk about, but it turned into something completely different, and we're very happy it did, and we talked about really doing the things that serve you with fitness, uh, with life, or whatever, um, and uh, it, it led us to really think about workout programs and how much uh, stuff is injected into them that really doesn't serve the individual. It's just a bunch of fluff. And MAPS Anabolic represents uh, really what you need. It is our most basic foundational program, but when you follow it, you'll get tremendous results because you're only doing what's going to get you results. You're not doing anything extra. Your body is responding to the most effective exercises, phased in the most ex effective way. It's the program we recommend everybody start with. MAPS Anabolic uh, is the program that started it all. You can find it at mindpumpmedia.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.